Finally, I want to look at our two paths of ideal gas compression in a little more detail and contrast them to illustrate the difference between reversible and irreversible processes, which we'll get into much more detail with when we talk about the second law of thermodynamics. These two processes of compressing a gas from a larger initial volume to a smaller final volume are compressions, and they were done at constant temperature, so they're known as isothermal compression paths. The top here we have path two, which is the path where we made sure using grains of sand that at every point the external pressure and the gas pressure were equal. The bottom path is the irreversible isothermal compression, which happened rapidly, right? The external pressure was larger than the gas pressure everywhere except at the very end of the process. The pinkish, bluish area here under the curve is the work performed in each case. And in fact, you don't see any pink in the top case because the area under the curve is just the area under the gas pressure versus volume curve since the external pressure and the gas pressure were equal. Notice that the work performed in the top case is significantly less than the work performed in the bottom case. And so path two involves a lot less work than path one. And this puts a quantitative spin on that idea. The number of joules of work performed in each case are shown quantitatively here, 46-ish for path one and 21-ish for path two. Path two seems kind of unique. Why are we using grains of sand to make these teeny tiny changes in the external pressure? What using grains of sand does is it ensures that the external pressure is equal to the gas pressure throughout the process. That means that the system and surroundings never leave a state of equilibrium in which the two pressures are equal. They start out in disequilibrium, but remember we're holding the piston in a fixed position at this very initial state. So after this state in the middle here, the system never leaves equilibrium. This means that we could perform the exact reverse of the process of moving along the gas pressure versus volume curve simply by adding sand back onto the piston. This would not change the situation of the system or surroundings in any way. Path 2's process is what we call reversible. We can actually go back in time and revert the system back to the way it was without any change in the surroundings whatsoever. And since the system and surroundings are always in equilibrium, we can calculate changes by referring to only the system state functions, since the surroundings pressure, the external pressure, is always equal to the systems or the gas pressure. We can replace the external pressure with the gas pressure. And that's highly convenient, for example, if we know that the system obeys a certain equation of state, like the ideal gas law. Path 1 looks more like a process we'd see in real life, where we just dump a certain mass on top of the piston so that the external pressure is greater than the gas pressure the whole way until the final state. For a significant amount of time, for essentially the entire process, the external pressure differs from the gas pressure. So the two are not in equilibrium. The system and surroundings are not in equilibrium with each other. And as it turns out, the exact reverse of this process is physically impossible. We would have to, for example, expend work to convert the right-hand state into the left-hand state. We'd have to push up on the piston somehow. But doing so would actually leave the universe in a different state because expending that work would change the surroundings. For that reason, path one's process, this spontaneous pushing down of the mass on the piston to a smaller volume, is irreversible. And the key here is really to consider the surroundings. We can't completely convert the heat released to the surroundings, which is a chunk of that work, remember, is related to heat transfer, completely back to work. We can't get the surroundings exactly back to the way they were before we did this irreversible compression. We'll see this in more detail when we talk about the second law and learn how entropy plays a role in reversible and irreversible processes.